Hey everybody, who might watch this, which is nobody. Hey Brandon. Um, a few people have asked me about how I've been doing my pixel art, so I figured I would make a quick little tutorial video of what I do. I'm sure there's better methods and other tutorial videos, but this is kind of the way I do it. So, um, in Photoshop, I use Photoshop for my work. Um, here is I have a quick doodle that I did earlier. Did it disappear when I moved it like that? Of course it did. Anyway, quick doodle I did earlier. Um, what I'm going to do. Real small, little thumbnail, pretty loose and sketchy. Um, here we have a 50 by 50 pixel image. That's what it is at 100%. Um, depending on how big you want your, your how much resolution you want your art to have, this could change, but I've been working pretty small, so I do. 50 by 50 is usually good enough. Let me put that in the window here. So what I do is I grab my thumbnail, copy it and paste it, and it is huge. You can see it goes way outside, and I just make it tiny. And you won't be able to tell really what's going on, but it's mostly the silhouette that I'm really concerned with, and the shapes that I put on there. It gets tiny. I'll zoom in. Um, and then I'll probably turn the opacity down a bit. Uh, so what I use in Photoshop, it might be kind of hard to tell, um, under the brush tool, if you hold down on it, you can get to the pencil tool. And the pencil tool at square, is, no, is just the brush tool without any uh, alpha or uh, aliasing on it so it's you know it's one pixel wide uh, I mean you can use them bigger um, but it's always going to stay it's always going to just fill the pixels it's not ever going to put transparency on unlike the brush which as you can see does the transparency um, so pencil tool um, I'll usually sometimes I'll just do a black outline or if I don't have a quick thumbnail sketch I'll draw with a black outline um, but if I kind of have in my head an idea what colors I want, I will just start putting them down over the, the picture. I'm so on a new layer, I'll just kind of draw the shapes and make sure I'm getting in the details that I, I have on my thumbnail. Which I realize you guys might not have seen at all. Um, I mean, I'm going to close my. Um, right there. Okay, so as you can see with my other sketch, I zoom in a bit. It's got fins and the wing, wings on the side for you and some under undercarriages. It's a plane that I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna fill this out. Um, and the thing, one of the things I love about to pixel art is be really rough with it. It's really easy to change later. Um, not too concerned about being perfect. Um, and at a certain point, it's kind of like just playing like a puzzle game or playing with Lego or something, where you're just placing blocks down, kind of. Um, so I covered up my fin a little bit. further. So I'm going to do this for its own color too, so you can tell the shape of the plane a little better. So this is basically the entire process for me. Um, just kind of drawing it on. I use a Wacom tablet. Um, which is probably overkill for something like this, but I still feel like I have a lot of can have a lot of control over, you know, drawing lines and making sure it feels right. Um, um, 
doing just a side view like this is a little funky too. But gets the job done. Um I don't know what else I can really go over once I start getting into actual shading I can do that. But So let's ignore the underside for right now. I'll just go into coloring. Uh, just basically use the color picker. Use what I've got, and then I'll either you know make a lighter version or a darker, and just kind of you know kinda start getting shapes in. Um, Pixel Pixel also does div. I mean, in a lot of Pixar, they use dithering like that, where you're gonna have like shadows made up of, uh, you know, the basic shapes, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't think it works quite well, but, um, you know, whatever works for what you're working on, that could be kind of fun to add some depth with it like that. Uh, I'm just putting in some random ones, some random color. It's very easy to, you know, change and fix stuff later if it doesn't look perfect. Um, so, I just do this and then edit it faster later. I usually go with two or three colors, so a darker, a mid shade, and like a, a highlight. Um, so I can add in that extra level of uh, detail. Like shading going on. It actually makes it, you know. This might be too low resolution, too. I might decide that I'd rather not be able to put more shading in and more pixels down. <clears throat> and I can change the size of it later. There. So I may just do this real quick and then fast forward through this part. So here I've made a new layer, which uh, can be really helpful when you're doing pixel art. If you're doing, I mean, the same reason layers are helpful in any type of art. It's good to do some, you know, if you have any things you want to put under stuff. Uh, I usually use it for when I do characters to add, like, weapons or uh, inventory stuff, like bags. Because it's really easy to just focus with that stuff on a certain layer and change it and get rid of it if you don't like it. Um, it usually ends up being add-on stuff that gets put on the layer. Um, so right now I'm going to add like a little guy in the cockpit maybe. Probably going to be way too big. Because he's going to be like tiny little bats. But anyway.
So my design for this plane is a little funky. Um, not super standard, so here's where this might get a little weird. But I want to create some sort of shape under here. Um, so it's gonna have this is why my doodle is so loose, because I'll probably end up doing most of the design right here. side reconnaissance kind of thing going on. Um, I usually try to limit my color palette to make it so it's not super noisy. But I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, so I'll probably fill around with a couple things. So another good reason to do layers is um, I can set this up like just at an absurd color and fiddle with it later. So I'll add a new layer. I want this to be separate. That's where the propeller is going to go, so that's its own thing. Back to down here. Actually, I could overlap it a little, maybe like this. And even maybe up here as well. We'll see. This is easy to change later, obviously. It's gonna have some, some cockpit. Let's go back to normal. I can just steal the colors again. Here, well, one of the UI elements I'm thinking of doing. Um, so it's like a ground like bombing thing. I don't know, I've got a plan in my head, but I'm not sure what it is yet. So this may change. The red might so it might change. It's good to have you know consistent color going on. So everything stays kind of not too crazy. As you can see in my design, I got a little undercarriage thing going on here. Kind of flesh out there. It's I mean it feels stupid talking about this it. like it's so doing so much work so I'm not it's just little dots but people it really just takes like crazy eyeballs to see what I'm doing. Crazy eyeballs. Um, and then after that it's just kinda 
but damn. I ran to my wife. You are really funny. The funniest. I don't know, that's perfect. We'll probably change later. So. Anyway, back to just doing this. Soft line, there we go. So there's my totally non flyable plane that I just made. This is somewhere. And then it's always good to kind of, if someone's hard to tell what's going on, kind of relate it to everything else. So this is getting that now too. See all the little wing edges have their own color, which makes sense. Uh, this should probably be like a highlight instead. Above. Sometimes you get into mouse clicky mode. Sometimes, which works too. Read a little better. So if you get done with a section, you can kind of put it down. Uh, grab everything and slide it back a little so that I can add. Layers also really help with animation later, uh, which I can do a thing on if people want, but I wasn't going to do it for this guy right now. This could even be red. This will match. It will look cool. And this could actually be like the engines of the mechanical colors. Could give it some interest in. Not much. And then give a group of color. First side, what it's going, animate, it'll probably just like a line. Um, maybe get some outside. Swishes going on. And then we'll animate later. Spin it around. So you have a little ship real quick tutorial. I don't know if anyone had any like Brandon who asked me for this had any specific questions. Uh, but I'm happy to answer some or show anything else that I someone might be interested in. Um, um, yeah. 
So, woo! 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 woo. Alright, I'm done. Uh, one last thing before I go. Uh, the best way I find to save it is so this is real small, right? At 100% zoom. That's the actual size. Um, a lot of the games that I've been working on, and for when I post it online, I don't want it to be that size, but I want it to maintain the pixel look. Um, you can do that a mul multiple ways. If you wanted to actually scale it up uh, just by doing image size, you can just make sure the nearest neighbor, Preserve Hard Edges, is on. That way it'll scale up all the pixels. Um, but if you do that, uh, it will hard to edit afterwards because nothing will be the same pixels anymore uh, and you won't be able to just use the regular one size brush. Um, so the way I do it is I usually keep them at this size and leave them here so I can edit them that way later and then do save for web which is also alt shift control and s all those together bring up this screen. Uh, on this screen um, you can, this is how you'll save an animation if you do it with the gif format um, but if you're just doing art, you can just do the PNG 24. The amount of colors doesn't really matter. Um, what's nice about it down here and on some other on some older versions, there's actually a tab for it. You don't have to find it. Um, it's like right around here in the middle. It says like image size. Um, but down here, you can do, change the quality to nearest neighbor, so you don't get any weird uh, transparencies. But then just increase the percent. It'll size it up. It'll tell you the pixels of it, and it'll, you can just do by percent. Make sure you always do a multiples of uh, 100, because if you don't, your pixels will be off. Um, you can maybe get away with 50%. It won't look terrible, like five, like if you do 550. But if you actually went in and looked at it, all your pixels might be a little weird shaped, which bugs the crap out of me. So I end up just keeping it uh, scaled to about 100. And then you just do save, and it'll save. You can save it out. Anyway, that is uh, that is how that I do that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.